The Honourable Member for Lambton Kent Middlesex. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today to speak on Bill C-205, an act to amend the Health of Animals Act, the private member's bill of my Conservative colleague, the member for Foothills. I want to congratulate the member for Foothills and thank him for this bill. The member understands the challenges farmers, ranchers and processors in his riding face, and he knows what they are up against. The residents of Foothills are well served on their behalf. Speaker, I'm very proud to represent all of my constituents of Lambton Kent Middlesex, and in speaking to this bill, I'm representing the thousands of farm families who would benefit from this change in legislation, not only in my own riding, but across our great country. This last year has shown us just how important our farms and farm families are in ensuring our domestic food supply. Mental health has come to the forefront during the pandemic, and this includes the mental health of all those who work in agriculture to produce the foods we all enjoy. This bill protects not only the animals, but also the workers and families who care for them. It addresses very directly the concerns of farmers, ranchers, producers, and processors about biosecurity. The welfare of livestock, poultry, or fur-bearing animals, when outsiders trespass or insinuate themselves by false premise on farmland, grazing land, production sites, or in transit, is critical to protecting our domestic food supply in our agriculture industry. Viruses like African swine fever and even COVID-19 pose a real threat to biosecurity. They can decimate our livestock herds and have long-lasting devastating impacts on our, on our farms. It is critical that Canadians have a reliable and safe food supply system. In order to ensure the integrity of our food supply system, Canadians, ranchers, farmers and producers and processors adhere to the most robust security standards developed by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency and protocols and strategies in collaboration with producer organizations, provincial, territorial governments and academia. They work diligently to follow these standards and ensure the health and welfare of their animals. Mr. Speaker, Few people understand animals better than those who raise them. They understand their behavior and their instincts, their feed and water needs, and what they require to feel safe where they are kept, their veterinary requirements, and what is humane treatment for that particular species of animal. Speaker, they understand that livestock, poultry, fur-bearing animals, and dogs and cats for that matter, are not human beings. Herding animals want to be treated according to their behavior and their instincts, as do other livestock, poultry, and yes, dogs. Those who raise livestock, poultry, or fur-bearing animals do so because they enjoy being around animals. They do something they enjoy in order to earn a living from raising these animals for commercial purposes. Their ability to earn a living from animals depends on their giving those animals good care and treatment. Mr. Speaker, on a farm, ranch, or production site with animals, every animal has a purpose. Dogs serve as an early warning sign to intru for intruders and property and keep away foxes and coyotes. Farm cats help hold down the rodent population in barns and around farmsteads. But animals raised for commercial purposes benefit us. The eggs and bacon we fry up for breakfast comes from chicken and hogs. The milk we put on our cereal and the cream we add to our coffee or tea comes from a dairy cow, as does the butter on our toast and the cheese on our burger or pizza. That steak or roast beef on your supper table or from your favorite steakhouse comes from beef cattle, as does the pastry shawl made with lard that comes with your piece of pie. Your Thanksgiving or Christmas turkey with or without the trimmings comes from a poultry producer's work. Speaker, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to feel a little hungry, but it doesn't stop there. The wool in your suit, sweater or blanket comes from fleece sheared from a sheep. The leather and belts, boots, purses and briefcases, the fur collars on a coat or the fur lining of your slippers comes from the hides of animals raised for purpose. Mr. Speaker, Canadians are indebted to farmers, ranchers and producers for the food, clothing and household goods that give us sustenance, warmth and enjoyment. Their contribution to the quality of life should not be underestimated, nor should the excellent quality of life those farmers, ranchers, and producers give their animals. Now, I understand not everyone eats meat, poultry, or eggs, drinks chocolate milk, or enjoys ice cream, or a slice of cheese, nor wears leather or fur, but the vast majority of Canadians do. 
Deciding that you will not eat meat, poultry, eggs, or dairy, nor wear leather shoes, nor carry a leather purse, does not entitle you to prevent other Canadians from enjoying these products. Your freedom of choice does not entitle you to trespass on a farm, ranch, or production site to engage in behavior that stresses animals, introduces diseases, or vandalizes private property. Speaker, we continue to see an increase in people trespassing on farms and at food processing centers. And there's a real potential to cause massive health and safety issues for the animals and the individuals who work with them. Despite the pandemic, we've seen that COVID-19 affects not only humans, but also poses a real threat to the health of some animals, and in turn, the livelihoods of those families who depend on animals to make a living. When individuals enter a farm unlawfully, they not only threaten the health of animals with potentially exposing them to disease, but the welfare of the animal is also in danger. Farmers in my riding have seen firsthand the devastating harm to the animals when protesters release them from their cages and moms and babies are separated with no way of knowing how to reunite them. Regardless of one's own opinion, this kind of behavior should not be tolerated, especially when the health and safety of the animal is put in jeopardy. That choice and preference does not entitle you to insinuate yourself by trespassing under false premises onto a farm, ranch, or production site. To clandestinely capture video that is out of context and does not take account of animal behavior and needs. Mr. Speaker, as Canadians, we have the absolute right to hold our own views and opinions and the right to peacefully protest. I want to be clear that this bill in no way prohibits one's right to peacefully protest on public property. Speaker, when someone enters private property without permission, putting the health of farm families and animals at risk, there has to be consequences. This bill will increase the penalties for groups and organizations who encourage individuals to threaten the health and safety of animals and workers. There have been instances in my area where individuals have trespassed on a farm. Not only were the livestock and animals at risk, but also the families that may include young children who also reside on the property. Parenting and raising animals for a livelihood are hard work. Farmers should not have the extra burden of worrying about the safety of their children being affected by individuals unlawfully entering their farm as well. The worry adds a whole nother level of unnecessary health, mental health strain. Speaker, unlike most, if not all of us, who've had the privilege of serving as members of parliament, most farmers, ranchers, and producers who raise animals are not very political. Most just wanna get on with what they know and do best. Raising animals to feed us, clothe us, and serve our everyday lives. By doing so, they want to earn a living to look after their families and like all of us, feed and clothe themselves and their families and put a roof over their heads. As they do so, they just want to be left in peace. Speaker, is that really asking too much? Now, there are instances of animals being properly cared for, of course, but this bill in no way prevents whistleblowers and employees from reporting abusive and cruel conditions in livestock facilities. In fact, they have an obligation to report to the appropriate authorities any abuse, inhumane or irresponsible treatment as they operate in a highly regulated environment and must follow strict codes of conduct to ensure the health, safety and welfare of all farm animals, including farm animals at events like agricultural fairs and exhibitions. Speaker, those who raise animals for a living are the most vigilant when it comes to the animal's well-being. In today's global marketplace, it is critical we protect the integrity of Canada's supply chain and ensure our food remains safe to eat, prevents disease outbreaks, and ensures farmers and businesses do not lose significant income. Strengthening penalties for trespassers is something farmers, ranchers, food processors, farm groups, and commodity organizations all support. And I urge the Liberal government to do the same. 
That is why, again, as the official opposition shadow minister for agriculture and agri-food, I fully support Bill C-205, and I encourage all members of this House to support it with their votes in favour of this bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honorable député de